Hi, and welcome to San Francisco Ballet's Point of View Lecture Series. My name is Caitlin Sims, and I work in the marketing department at San Francisco Ballet. We are pleased to provide this free lecture series to the public. Before the pandemic, Point of View lectures were held in the War Memorial Opera House on Wednesday evenings. We are continuing that tradition and will offer Points of View lectures on Wednesdays following the initial stream of each of San Francisco Ballet's programs throughout the digital season. This conversation has been pre-recorded in order to accommodate our panelists' schedules. You can find the full length, full list of discussions and whether they are streamed live and pre-recorded on our website at sfballet.org backslash events. And now I'd like to introduce our presenter and panel facilitator, Claire Sheridan. Claire Sheridan established the dance program at St. Mary's College of California and is the founder of LEAP, a National Bachelor of Arts degree program specifically designed for professional dancers, including many dancers from San Francisco Ballet. Ms. Sheridan also has extensive international experience as a teacher, lecturer, and choreographer at the St. Petersburg, Petersburg Conservatory, Cambridge University, Charles University, and at academies and institutes in Japan, Germany, Switzerland, Bosnia, India, and the Ukraine. Welcome, Claire. Thank you. Yes, so thank you, Caitlin, and welcome everyone. I really appreciate you being here. We are talking about jewels, and today, folks, uh, we've hit the jackpot because we have not one, not two, but four artists from the San Francisco Ballet who will be talking about jewels. Uh, we have principal dancers Tiet Helenitz, Sasha de Sola, uh, soloist Sasha Mukhamedov, and former principal dancer and current SFB faculty member Pascal Molat. Now to our viewers and listeners, San Francisco Ballet was in a pandemic lockdown for six months until September when a safe protocol was developed to allow small pods of dancers to take class, rehearse and film ballet together. It's been a weird year. And so before we dive into this discussion of Jules, I'd like to do a brief check-in with my guests. Folks, uh, how are you doing uh, now working under the current COVID restraints? Atit, let's start with you. <laughs> Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I would say it is great to be back in the studios and working with everybody, learning choreography, studying. Um, it is making a big difference rather than doing your ballet classes at home and staying in shape at home. So it's in that regard, it's really great. And uh, Sasha de Sola. I agree with T. It's, you know, I feel so fortunate that we're able to be in the studios to not only take class, but um, we've created new ballets this year somehow, which is just a feat in itself. Um, and we're continuing to rehearse, looking forward to next season, which is fabulous because it keeps the dancers engaged and motivated. I mean, of course, I cannot deny it has not been easy even with all of these incredible um, things that we've been afforded, like being able to use a studio. But um, I think it's, it, you know, hopefully the light is, is at the end of the tunnel is a little bit closer and we're just trying to stay motivated to return to our audiences as soon as possible. Uh, Sasha Mukamedev. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything everyone has said so far. It's, it was definitely, a weird experience to be stuck at home and trying to figure out how to do ballet at home the first how many months that was I can't even write it feels like so long ago now um but yeah once we got back into the studio it's really amazing even with the protocols that I that we have with we have to wear masks of course and we're in smaller pods but it's just so amazing to be around other people and being able to work on something you know it really yes. makes such a difference yes and Pascal, you have the perspective of a teacher and coach. How is yes. it? <clears throat> I believe like the organization is, is doing so well with our protocol because since September, September we are back with the older student. Um, unfortunately, we don't have still like the lower student like in the school, but it's about to happen. So we might like feel like, you know, having everybody at the school. So like uh, like uh, Sasha said, we we see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, little by little. And I think like all the protocol have been working very well. That's why all the dancer, but also all the student, like 
we had not not much problem at all you know to even if something was happening everything was very very well organized and controlled so we we feel uh working in a very safe environment on top of it so it's it's uh, encouraging i think for everybody well it's been I've admired you all for, for, for hanging in there. It is ballet's a difficult career and to try to maintain your strength throughout an entire year and, and the motivation. Yeah, is, a lot um, of resilience for the, the students, yeah. but also the professional dancers. Yes, for absolutely. Sure. Okay, uh, Jules, let's get back to Jules, was choreographed by George Balanchine for the New York City Ballet in 1967 and it made headlines then as the first full evening plotless ballet. It's a triptych, three separate works set to music by three different composers, but it's all unified by theme and decor. Balanchine was inspired to create this ballet after he met Claude Arpels, a famous jeweler, and visited the Van Cleef and Arpels Salon on Fifth Avenue. Jules is comprised of three one-act ballets, emeralds, rubies, and diamonds. They each evoke a different mood, and explore a different style. Though each ballet can be performed on its own independently, the three works uh, beautifully enhance and complement one another when seen together in one program. You know, you watch Jules and you can't help but admire the range of Balanchine's choreography. And I would like to show a couple images uh, now um, so that you can get a sense of the costumes at least and the kind of the, the look. So hopefully you can all see beautiful Sasha Mukamedov in emeralds. That's a beautiful picture. And we have another one of emeralds. Kind of show that looks like, looks like the facets of a jewel to me. And then of course, rubies, there's Pascal dancing with Vanessa Zahorian. And this is uh, Sofiane Silva in the role of the tall girl. We'll talk about that a little bit. And more rubies. And fi finally diamonds, there's Sasha and Teet looking quite elegant. This is a finale where everyone comes on stage. And again, more of diamonds. So I just kind of wanted to share those pictures so that people who haven't seen um, uh, Jules can have a, some image in their mind. So today we'll be discussing what makes each section of Jules distinct and the guests will be sharing their personal insights and experiences about performing this work. What I thought we'd do first uh, folks is uh, focus on one ballet at a time. So Sasha Mukhamedev can talk about emeralds, Pascal rubies and Tiet and Sasha the Sola Diamonds, and then I'll throw out some general questions for the group you know, to, to discuss. Let's start with Emeralds, since that is the first ballet on the program, music by Gabriel Fauré. Now, Sasha Mukhamedov, folks, I'm aware we have two Sashas, so I'll do my best to keep things clear here. Uh, uh, your performance in Emeralds was recently filmed on the Opera House stage for this digital program four. Um, first of all, I understand that Sandra Jennings staged and coached this ballet via Zoom from Australia. Yep, that's right. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> we talk about that. Good for her, boy. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. She, I mean, she's amazing. San, Sandy is an amazing woman and she obviously knows her balancing stuff and can see every little detail even through Zoom. It's incredible. <laughs> well, how would you describe the mood and the style of Emeralds? Yeah, that's, uh, I definitely think it's a lot more of it has more like a, because it was supposed to be based as if in France, right, uh, emeralds. And so I feel it has that sort of French chic uh, aspect to it, you know, that it's a very flowing, everyone's sort of as if they're floating through the streets of Paris or something. That That's my feeling of it anyways. <laughs> There's kind of, it's a one ballet that has romantic length tutus. Yes. that help kind of create the yeah I think it gives that because when you're moving in the choreography like it's fun to use the skirt as your dancing you know you kind of move in one direction and the skirt sort of slowly follows you behind and it gives like an extra um, beautiful line to things that you do 
like when you're in a lift, how the skirt stays up just that little bit longer before you land. And it looks really gives that image of like you're floating. Now, there are two female lead roles in Emeralds and, and they each have a solo in the first third of the ballet. Which role do you dance in the recently filmed version? And can you talk about that a little bit? So I do, I dance the second girl. So I do the walking pas de deux and uh, the second variation. And um, yeah, for me, I think they're both similar in the sense like, yeah, you have this very beautiful music and it's all very uh, romantic again, you know, and um, it, my variation is, well, actually they're both very long. So actually when you're going out there to dance them, you're kind of thinking, how am I going to get to the end? But because of the musicality that Balanchine has and the choreography and um, yeah, the movements that go along with it, it really actually helps you get through the variation. And so it's, it's really nice. Uh, Sasha DeSola, you've danced the other female role. And I'll ask you about that a little later. You're going to compare the, the two roles you have, the diamonds and uh, the emeralds. But Sasha, I, we had a phone conversation. I understand that your approach to emeralds has changed over time. Yes. <laughs> you talk about yeah. that. Um, so back in my previous company with Dutch National Ballet, so a long time ago was Elise came and set it for us, Elise Bourne. And I was learning the same role that I ended up dancing now for the filming. And I didn't get to perform it, but I was learning it and I was quite a bit younger back then. And for me, it seemed not so, I don't know, I felt like I, there wasn't enough uh, excitement or something, you know, not enough showing off kind of thing, you know, where, cause I was also learning rubies at the dancing rubies at the same time. So for me, Ruby's was like, oh yeah, this is so much fun. You know, you get to use your hips and you get to like be a little jazzy and it was great. And so for Emeralds, I feel like there's sort of this maturity that comes along with it. So as I got older and now dancing it this time, I actually appreciate it so much more and actually really loved it because I felt like now that I know my dancing a little bit better and have matured in the way that I dance and perform, I feel I understood the role of dancing Emeralds more and more about this feeling chic and feeling like uh yeah like you're a ballerina you know <laughs> you know in a way that the, the ballet the emeralds kind of pulls the audience into another world and gets it ready for the other two ballets as well so it's it is a great way to, to start this this program now the lead females each have a partner and, and although there is no story per se is there something going on with these couples or between these these two couples some kind of courtship or something or I think you could definitely think of it that way I think what's nice about emeralds is that you can kind of put your own story there and I think that's what's nice about abstract ballets in general you can kind of put your own interpretation on what you feel mm -hmm. in the moment how the music makes you feel how the movement makes you feel and um so yeah, I feel with dancing with your partner, so I'm the walking part of the, so it kind of feels like you're both going on a stroll through the park, you know, you've been together for a long time. And so you're just enjoying a day out in the sun or something like this. Or another way you could take it is maybe some, the girl is searching for something. So I think it can also depend maybe on each show and how you're feeling that day, how you decide to interpret the role. Now, folks, uh, have you all, all of you have danced in Emeralds, is that true? Teet and, and Pascal? Oh, great. Well, here's a question, you know, for, for, for all of you, actually. Um, the ending section with, with the seven dancers, Balanchine added that section on to the original, you know, uh, nine years after he created Emeralds. So what, what are your thoughts about that? It's, it's, uh, what, what are your feelings about this ending section and how the ballet ends? Uh, I, I, uh, I mean, I think we call it like the funeral, right? As a, the, the group calls it that. And I always thought that seems very sad to call it that. But at the same time, it goes suddenly very somber, very quiet. And it sort of, it sort of does feel like a farewell in a sense, mm -hmm. like you're saying, you know, you're saying goodbye to the people that you're, it's like as if you've been ha um, having an evening with friends and you're saying goodbye at the end of the night sort of thing. So it's like you're saying goodbye to the audience. Yes. Anybody have some thoughts about the ending? Sasha? Yeah, that, that ending, I, I tended to maybe overthink a bit, um, just because, uh, as you mentioned, the mood 
completely, sh it feels like it completely shifts. And yeah, we do call it the funeral, but I hate that name. I would rather call it the, pro the processional just because I find that um, in a way there's like a hopefulness to this. We all are very focused on an, a point almost very similar to um, Dances at a Gathering, the end of Dances at a Gathering where we focus outward and up not extremely elevated, but slightly up. And that simple gaze of the eye to me informs me as a dancer that this is something that um, it is like a farewell, but it's like until next time. And so it almost leaves you prepared for the next, you know that Emeralds has ended this, this style, this uh, journey through this decidedly French ballet. Um, Yet I, I feel, I don't know, this is completely my interpretation, but I feel that uh, Balanchine leaves us with this sense of, of hopefulness and actually looking forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so it kind of gives this leeway into rubies. That's, that's my interpretation. Gentlemen, do you like to add anything to that? No, yes, Pete. I, I just can't remember it that well. It was a really long time ago. <laughs> me neither, me neither, I have to be honest. Well, I think you have so many valleys in your head, you're excused. Um, okay, now, Sasha, I have, I have one more question for you, but it's a Ruby's question. And so let's have Pascal give us some insight into Ruby's um, before we, we ask you that. Uh, Last question. So Balanchine created Rubies in five days in 1967. Uh, music is by Igor Stravinsky. And if Emeralds evokes France, some say that Rubies is representative of America. Although when asked what Rubies was about, Balanchine responded, it's about 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> Pascal, what would be your answer to that question? What is Rubies about? Uh, it will be about 20 very hard minutes, I would say. <laughs> because it's a, a very athletic ballet, one of the, the top ones for sure. Uh, oh. So for me, it's not there, but if, if like I say about the ballet, I will say about the music, the music of Stravinsky. I think like for Ruby, it's, it's all about musicality and extreme musicality. And uh, I think the way I approach it, like many dancers, uh, Ruby's are different. Um, um, I mean, diamonds or emerald is like, uh, I really believe like uh, Balanchine is trying to give the characteristic and the energetic vibration of the stone through the music and the choreography. So there's been always like that, I've been approaching it. And, but like it's uh, for me, this, uh, this piece is mainly like, of course, a, a pas de deux, which is uh, amazing pas de deux and genius choreography. And so about connection and, the padded, that's what is the ruby for me. Is the, the, the style, how, how does it, how, can you describe the style a little bit? I mean, the, the Sasha mentioned it was it's jazzy, you know. Yes, but I believe like in rubies, you have like so many different facets mm. in from the start to finish with with everybody at the beginning, the introduction, the main padded, which isn't even the main padded, you have like, so many uh, um, uh, different uh, tunes and like jazzy and suddenly very uh, in depth, uh, like almost like very heavy and suddenly very joyful. So you, you pass like from a, a lot of different uh, emotion and interpretation during that part of the day. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's what is so interesting as a, an artist to approach and to tackle that ballet. I always remember like uh, Elise Bourne uh, like I can hear a voice over the music, like she's part of that ballet for me too, like working with her and also many different partners. Can you talk, talk about the, the role that you're performing in the version that's going to be streamed this season? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that role a little bit? Oh, so yeah, the, the role I think uh, itself, um, it's to make it valuable in everything. It's like, it's two, <laughs> you need to be two. <laughs> that's the role like the role itself like you have beginning introduction very uh, energetic then a, a big padder which is like the really the central piece of, of rubies and then all that finale which is the burst organ of mm -hmm. energy of technique of bravura of speed so uh, the role is very complete by itself like in 20 minutes you you get a range 
uh, which is really amazing to dance. Um, when we spoke earlier, Pascal, you mentioned the importance of building a connection with your partner. How is that done? I mean, uh, like anything else I will say, like through times, uh, through time, you can really build a relation and like really the, the trust that you have and after mm -hmm. the communication, because uh, it's always, I think, important to know how your partner is listening to the music, how you are listening to the music, what you want to try to put out there, what kind of story. So we, we, we talk to each other and, and in, especially in that uh, choreography, there is like some sometimes unconventional moves and and mm -hmm. things like that you can, you can really use uh, to tell a story to, to get uh, sometimes uh, very sensual or a little bit more strong or there is so many um, uh, set, uh, very subtle detail that there is in the choreography that if you really pay attention, actually you have a lot to play with. And that's why it's so important with your partner, I, I believe like to have a, a clear communication on, on the intention that you want to create together because it's just a dialogue. Um, now, if you were staging rubies, what would be your best words of advice to your dancers? Learn the music by heart, mm -hmm. enjoy fully, and go for it. <laughs> that there are some, yeah, go ahead, carry on. No, no, that's real. I think the three um, things that I would love like to them to have them for themselves to really feel comfortable and like it's such a rich music and like I say, there is so many subtlety on so many different layers. It's you can hear it like so many times and it's always discovering new things. Mm. There are some quirky movements in rubies that you don't encounter anywhere else in Balanchine's choreography. Um, I, it's kind of hard for you to explain what they are, but uh, how does that feel on your body and how does it feel to do these movements? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was talking about earlier, like some yeah. unconventional move where suddenly you have to move very fast, just your hips, you don't know why really, but mm -hmm. that's those moments that you can really put your interpretation to it. And of course, as a dancer, when you are not used to do a, a movement or like a new step that you never yeah. saw before, like, of course, like we are so interested by that because it's, uh, we are training uh, every day, I mean, not me anymore, I train every day, <laughs> now my student, but every day, you know, you are going back at the bar in a certain way, repeating the same thing. And, and when after you have the chance to explore uh, different ideas and vocabulary that the choreographer has for you, it's like a golden uh, material to, mm -hmm. to approach and try to uh, really interpret. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. uh, Sasha Mukameda, you've danced the role of the tall girl in rubies that, that's a big part can you talk a little bit about her yeah i was actually like nodding along to everything pascal was saying it's so true that music is um and so for everyone dancing in there you know one of the biggest challenges of the ballet is the music and that's what's so amazing about balancing how he manages to hear all those little subtle differences mm -hmm. and as you're learning it and as you're done you know uh, practicing and getting it more in your body you hear you start hearing them mm -hmm. and so yeah, the, the tall girl definitely has the same sort of issues with trying to get that musicality right on. <laughs> um, but what I like about uh, her, like it's nice where, as a solo person, you don't have to worry about this, making sure that with your partner, you have that connection, mm -hmm. right? So that you're uh, still in sync when you're dancing alone, it's a little more different. But at the same time, she's sort of like, the ring leader, I guess, of the group. So I have, you have the whole group to be in sync with at some point, you know, that you're kind of leading them on in the, in this uh, dance. And um, in that sense, she sort of reminds me sort of like roles like in Giselle Mirta, for example. Mm. And so she's sort of like above everybody, but at the same time, of course, you have the main couple who are the ones who are really the stars of the whole ballet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's end here uh, with Diamonds, which is described as an homage to the 19th century Russian imperial style of ballet, think Katipa. The music is Tchaikovsky. Uh, Teet, we'll be seeing you and Sasha in the video of Diamonds that will be streamed in program four. What are your memories of learning Diamonds and first performing it? 
the, um, the first time I got to perform this was on my second year and it was with Sarah Van Patten and it was taught by Elise Bourne and I would have to say uh, it, it was just wonderful um, a little ballet piece that I've never seen before or never danced and I loved all the steps that were in it and I was thinking oh this is great this is just the kind of stuff that I want to do mm -hmm. and um, initially just being really um, happy to be part of something like that. And Sasha, your your experience of learning it and first performing it. Yes, so actually, uh, coincidentally, the video that is being streamed this year is actually my debut in the role. So you will see the very first time I performed it. Um, I was very lucky to be partnered with Teat for that experience. And I that role had always been a dream role for me, I think. I think I saw a video of Suzanne Farrell doing that when I was a teenager, and I immediately, immediately fell in love with the ballet, particularly that central pas de deux. Um, and then, of course, watching all of the ballerinas here at San Francisco Ballet perform it up until I had the chance to do so. Um, I definitely felt very fortunate to be doing a role that I so deeply loved. But that being said, I also felt quite a bit of pressure um, because of that. So it's, I, I yeah, it, it was all actually an amazing experience because I was very, very happy to be even in the studio, let alone perform it. Uh, Sasha, you've also danced in Emeralds. I told you that we might come back to this question. Can you talk about the bracelet solo that you do in that ballet and how it differs from what you do in Diamonds? Yeah. So. I think um, while these these ballets are plotless, I find that there's still some level of narrative, I suppose, or character to him to them. Um, so the emeralds is, as Sasha Mukhamedov mentioned, um, is is quite romantic. Um, so there's almost. The part that I um, learned is the Violette Verdi solo. And it, for me, it's like a perfume. It's a like beautiful perfume, right? And so she has all of these incredible uh, port de bras. So her variation begins only with port de bras. She just stands and just does port de bras. Um, and it's almost like calligraphy. It's like moving your arms and your hands as if you're writing with them, as if you're speaking with them. Um, and I remember when I was working on this with Elise just before she passed away in 2019, she imbued to me that it's very important that the arms not be too light. So they shouldn't be um, just weightless. There actually needs to be a weightedness to them, um, which actually like increases this kind of circular um, movement. So it gives a different kind of look then in diamonds it's much more obviously regal and a little bit more austere um and uh grander and so it's it's really fun to have the opportunity to kind of play with both because they both involve port bras that are instrumental and very much um very easily identifiable to each ballet um, but the way that the dancer approaches them is very different and that leaves the audience with a completely different um, impact. Uh, Teet, at the heart of Diamonds is a pas de deux for you and Sasha. What's happening there? And is the partnering you do in Diamonds different from what you do in Swan Lake or Sleeping Beauty? You know, that's really interesting. Um, I don't think that there is a direct connection to Swan Lake, but I had a conversation with Send, uh, Sandy Jennings mm -hmm. about this, and and the part of the has references or homage to Tchaikovsky's beautiful classical ballet of Swan Lake, but there really isn't. It really isn't like a deliberate story there. But and in that conversation, we were discussing the part of the and. She just passed on a couple of notes that I, I really just, it makes perfect sense is that the, 
male figure is there to present the jewels and and present the excellence and hold the excellence with with care and and show it off and basically like the the backbone of uh, of support for this female character and and even though i I've, I've been doing it maybe subconsciously always thinking i am always there for the ballerina anyways but but it, it it's really deliberate in in this particular part of the and and also also how much it's evolved uh, originally the the scherzo part of the of the of the diamonds was twice as long and and the kiss at the end of the part of the was something that Jacques D'Ambois just came up with in a spur of the moment that wasn't even there. And, and, and uh, the other important thing was the way that you walk, the use of your plié, like, like Sandy said to me, it's, it's like uh, watching Noreev walk or before he prepares for his solo, like he has this solid strong walk and elegance so those are the ideas that um, uh, run through me while I'm doing this part of the, and also most important thing is the connection with your partner that's like 100 percent Sasha can you, you want to comment on the part of the anything oh, yeah I I completely agree just to go off what he just said the connection between you and your partner I think is one of the most important things um, it's Again, be because it's plotless, there isn't necessarily a particular story you're trying to convey, but um, there's a, the, the connection between the cavalier and the ballerina is so imperative in order to give this sense of, it, the cavalier is uh, such a grounded character and so is the ballerina, yet she's absolutely, as Tid was kind of mentioning, she's the diamond, she's, you can tell that, the cavalier is there to um, kind of show her off. And I think uh, finding moments to make these, this connection with your partner in different sections of the pas de deux is not only um, important, but it's gratifying uh, for the artist to, to find the moments to really find that genuine connection for that authenticity to ring through to the audience as well. Um, in order for it to, it's almost a 10 minute long pot de So it, you have to shape it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way that you shape it is through that connection with your partner. And the, the grand finale in Diamonds, it, uh, can you talk a little bit about that, the Polonaise? Uh, Pete? So yeah, so after speaking with Sandy, um, mm -hmm she mentioned it is um it is walk to the party everyone's gathered everyone is prepped up and looking beautiful and they are all walking uh, she said it, it's like a big finale in a ballet where we're right we're showing also how we got there and that's the walk it's it's going to the big finale and and also showing the the different character of uh, of our part of the, which was very beautiful and romantic, and now it's sharp and quick, and a versatility of the ballerina as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sasha, I think. Uh, no, just I, I think it's so beautiful. It's all of a sudden a huge cast, right? It's probably the biggest cast we've seen in all of Jewels. So all of a sudden, huge cast, very brightly lit. There's these gorgeous chandeliers. Everybody's in white or off-white or cream, whatever. And um, it's very effective. It definitely gives that imperial Russian, mm -hmm. almost nod to a ballet blanc kind of mm -hmm. idea. Um, so yeah, it's a very effective and quite a grand way to end the whole evening of jewels. We have a couple of general questions for you. And, and actually, Pascal was talking about this, that balancing choreography is of course famous for its musicality. And you as dancers, how did Balanchine's choreography, what did it reveal to you about the music? Does anybody have some thoughts? Maybe Sasha, Glameda? 
was gonna say Sasha to sell a go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the more I dance balance sheet, I love dancing balance sheet. It's like some of my favorite choreography to dance is his choreography. And I think because of not just his style, but the musicality aspect of it, he really does find these amazing uh like Pascal said that time subtleties in the music that you wouldn't think to pick up on and he picks those specific moments out and that's the moments that he puts his choreography on and it really gives you that extra sparkle in his choreography and it makes you feel that too it's it's yeah do, do you folks count the music do you like Pascal do you do you, that's very complicated music and rubies do you count it oh yes you have to you have to, and especially like I mean, uh, I always remember at the, at the end of the solo of the of, of the the woman in rubies. Uh, I'm coming from the wings, and the music is particularly like uh, very exigent and complex. Mm. And I was always like very worried at that moment because like most of the time, like people are applauding because it's the end of the of her variation, and you need to count the beat. And at one point, like it's almost like you are blind or deaf. You have like just to get on your natural rhythm and go from the wig hoping it's the right note that, because it's so precise. So it was always like, a, um, yes, a, a moment of like, woohoo, okay, keep it, keep it internally, here we go. And was like always like more on the music, but it was always a moment where uh, on top of it, you are coming like very elegantly, powerful, making some jump, walking, talking about like different work mm -hmm. in this ballet, but, and so it was always a, a little bit nerve wracking uh, at that moment. But for sure, one thing that Balanchine does in, in, in this ballet is, is always making you think about the music and how to approach it. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, is always like making you question, questioning, mm -hmm. you know, about like, how are you gonna hear that? How are you gonna hear that? I think it's, it's so true for any ballet of Balanchine. Mm -hmm. Any other comments Talking about the music? Team? I'll just say that there's always more to discover. I think that's what's also yeah. so gratifying for the dancers is no matter how many times you dance it, there's always more to discover. There's always more to find in it. There's always more places to kind of play with your dynamic and musicality within these confines that he created. And so it's really fun for us, to be honest. It's, it's super fun to be able to kind of dive into that. And it seems like, like the, you, you can evolve in the roles, like how you performed it years ago is not how you're performing it now. Is that, is that true? Yeah, everyone's nodding. I think we, we all change and uh, evolve and get mature. And uh, also when you approach uh, differently uh, the roles as, as you grow old also. also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's so, true in everything, in everything that we do as dancers, yeah. which is what's so great about this profession too. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, as you mentioned this, uh, everyone's sort of talked about this, uh, but Suzanne Farrell writes in her book, Holding On to the Air, quote, although Jules is a story, <laughs> although Jules is without a story, it is not without motifs. And I have always felt that the thread that connects the three gems is woven by walking. Each of the three sections makes a statement about a specific style of walking. And is, is that, you know, you know, do you believe that to be true and want to comment about that, especially the walking in, in, in emeralds? Uh, Sasha, what do you think about that? Yeah, that sounds, I think that sounds pretty accurate, definitely. Like um, Sasha mentioned earlier about how, it, you know, it's like as if she's doing, um, you can't just do it lightly, right? Anything, even though it's, you look like you're floating, it's still, has to be with this sort of groundedness. So it's almost like walking through water or something, mm -hmm. you know, that you're kind of pushing through something that still looks effortless, but in the sense that it actually, it doesn't look like it's nothing, you know, it make that's what makes it look like mm -hmm. something special, not just walking on the street. Mm -hmm. And I think he has that, yeah, for every ballet, a specific type of, uh, uh, yeah, walk or idea to have in your back of your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And T, do you have any thoughts about that? The only thing I can think of is that the the walk 
at least when we rehearsed with Sandy just this last time before we had to stop, was the, the really the emphasis on the plie and the groundedness and not to be stiff, but just to be um, smooth and, and uh, Balanchine always emphasized on men the way that, um, that you use, you know, just keep saying plies, mm -hmm. but, um, but that, that's the only thing I can think of. And with, with the emeralds, uh, I did the walking part of the, that was just walking demi point. So mm -hmm. that was something that was new for me, which, which you can't use your plie on mm -hmm. so much, but diamonds for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched the last Point of View interview and the moderator, Carrie Geiser Casey, asked her guests this uh, great question, which I'm going to steal. Um, are there moments in jewels that pop out at you? That was the question. Like what images, memories, feelings come to mind when you think of this, this piece? It could be a, a moment of the, the communication or a moment of waiting in the wings or some image in your mind. Sasha, can you think? I think I have an image for okay. each of the three ballets. Oh. You've uh, been in all three. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for Emeralds, the image that stands out to me is um, actually the opening um, with the full cast of the core women. It's all obviously green, Emerald. Um, <laughs> And, and with uh, one of the principal couples standing and uh, there's already this, this uh, mm, I don't know, human romantic quality to it. Uh, with rubies, it's always, I always think of the spikiness of it. So I always think of the tall girl and I think of the pot de couple kind of making these positions that are not um, traditional classical positions. So there's an angularity to the whole ballet that is very, it definitely stands out to you, especially when it's juxtaposed right next to mm -hmm. emeralds, when you've just seen emeralds. And lastly, with diamonds, I think the, the image that stands out to me would be, um, there was a moment uh, between the ballerina and her cavalier where he's actually holding her hand behind her back and um, she's looking at him before she looks away. And that moment, I think, speaks volumes to what the connection is between the ballerina and the cavalier, that it's literally three seconds. But those three seconds, I think, speak to how those two artists are approaching the role. Mm. Who else? Some moment that Pascal. Um, <clears throat> like yeah, the moments are more like the, the feeling like you had on stage, like for example, me uh, uh, will always cherish like that energy group of all the male dancers together getting mm -hmm. full throttle, you know, and uh, you feel like all the energy of the group, it's, it's quite amazing. And also like during that pas de deux, you, you have like some, like you were talking about a picture, like it's this extension to the side. Uh, getting out, things like that, where you have the moment to appreciate, but you are still in the effort and you see the eyes of your partner. So it's kind of those little moments that you really keep with, with you, like kind of forever, mm -hmm. like those kind of feeling that you had at the moment. And that it's not a picture in particular, but it's more like the feeling of sharing, like that part of the, the, the man's and everything is yeah. pretty vivid. <laughs> Tid? Um, I would say that the, the entire part of the in diamonds is full of such epic moments and poses. But um, I love that moment very much, Sasha, that you mentioned. But there is this other um, moment where she does this, she sort of calls you towards you and then the man places the hand around her waist, but on the front. And she does this like a developer walks where she goes, she yeah. does the full arc from bending forward and goes all the way back and comes up into a punch and all is done in like one hand. But I really love, there is something really, really precious about the way that the women leans against the men's hand and she leans forward and she's very off balance, but there is, um, it's a wonderful trust moment and, and to, mm -hmm. 
to present classical ballet in a, such a non-classical way where the man is usually behind, he's almost like he's in the front. I, I just think it's the most brilliant moment. And Sasha Mukhamedov, uh wrap this up for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I was just thinking, I was agreeing a lot with Pascal. It's more, for me, it's more like the feelings of, I guess, how each of the ballets make you feel a little bit differently, sort of in a sense. And um, But at the same time, I was just sitting thinking and how all the finales of each of the ballets sort of really bring the group together. It's all sort of separate little moments and these finales, all the three finales sort of just really, yeah, bring those ballets together and finish off in such a, yeah, sort of joyous in a way sense sort of way. And it really makes you feel good like dancing emeralds. So like the part of that I do is quite slow and it's all very romantic, but then you come out for the finale and it's also, you know, the group's all together and everyone's dancing together. And it really gives you this like great excitement sort of mm -hmm. feeling. And I feel like each of the, Ballet sort of has that similarity too for the endings. Well, well, folks, I want to thank you for participating in this. And I think you can really, people who have seen you and heard you have a much better understanding of the ballet and, and know what to look for when it when uh, they see it online um, streaming this, this season. So uh, I'd like to thank you for giving us your time and sharing your professional insights with us all. Uh, it was very informative and, and fun. So Caitlin, back to you. Hi, and thank you, Claire, and Teet, and Pascal, and Sasha, and Sasha, um, and everyone watching for joining us for this point of view lecture. Please visit the website to learn more about San Francisco Ballet's digital season and our many educational offerings. On behalf of San Francisco Ballet, we wish you and your family good health. Thank you. Bye.